Hello and welcome. In this workshop, we will demonstrate how to use the ANSYS Fluent Meshing Water Tight Geometry Workflow to generate a simulation ready mesh that can be used to study the conjugate heat transfer characteristics of a generic turbine blade geometry. Using this simplistic model, we will identify a non standard workflow that can significantly improve the meshing process for complex turbine blade geometries. Along the way, we will also learn how to set up curvature local size control to accurately resolve the curvature of the cooling passages, employ manual rotational periodic boundaries, and set up boundary layer mesh in both fluid and solid regions to facilitate an accurate prediction of temperature gradients while performing the CHT analysis. Let's get started. Turbines used in gas turbine engines in various applications such as power generation, propulsion, etc. are placed downstream of the combustion chamber. As a result, they encounter fluid that is at extremely high temperature. In addition to using high temperature resistant material, cooling strategies such as passing bleed air from compressor through the blades via cooling channels is quite common. Realistic turbine blades are extremely complex with strong curvatures and long, narrow, winding cooling ducts. Good care needs to be taken while meshing such geometries in order to create appropriate meshes which can be used to accurately model the conjugate heat transfer process. Because of the complexity of the turbine blade geometry, there may be issues during the CAD creation phase associated with fluid domain extraction, shear topology, etc. In this workshop, we will demonstrate an alternative approach using a simple turbine blade geometry, which is also extendable to complex models that leverages the fluid domain extract feature of the watertight geometry workflow. Launch ANSYS Fluent in meshing mode. For this demonstration, double precision is enabled and four processes are engaged for meshing. Once Fluent Meshing launches, select Watertight Geometry Workflow. In the Import Geometry task, leave all the settings to default and load the provided geometry file. The geometry consists of only one region, that is the solid domain of the blade connected to the hub. The blade has 10 cooling channels that extend all the way from the top of the blade to the bottom of the hub. The blade is enclosed within surfaces that make up the boundaries of the fluid domain. Select yes for would you like to add local sizing option in the add local sizing task. To ensure that the cooling passages are sufficiently resolved, we will impose a curvature local sizing on them. Change the size control type to curvature. Set local min size to 0.1 and max size to 1 mm. Leave rest of the settings to default and pick the wall underscore cooling underscore passages label from the list and click on add local sizing to execute the task. In the Generate the Surface Mesh task, set the minimum size to 0.1 mm. Leave rest of the settings to default and execute the task. Next, it is time to set up the periodic boundary conditions. Right click on the Generate the Surface Mesh task to show the task specific context menu and pick Set up periodic boundaries from the Insert Next task menu. To virtually account for the multiple blades in the rotor row, we will set the sides of the model to use a rotational periodic boundary condition. Note that the solid and fluid surfaces from each side were grouped together to create the periodic underscore 1 and periodic underscore 2 labels during the CAD creation phase. 
This circumvents the limitation of being able to create only one set of periodic boundaries when using the watertight geometry workflow. In this demo, we will illustrate how to manually set up the periodic boundaries. Set type to rotational and method to manual. From the CAD, we know the angle between the two periodic faces is 8 degrees. Enter this value in the periodic angle input. Furthermore, the center of the rotation can also be got from CAD which is entered here. The rotation axis is in the negative y direction, so enter 0, minus 1, 0 for the x, y and z rotation axis direction inputs respectively. For the manual method, only one periodic phase needs to be selected and the second phase is auto-detected based on the above inputs. Select periodic underscore 1 from the list and execute the task. A successful execution of the task indicates that the periodic boundaries were correctly defined and set up. In the Describe Geometry task, select the geometry consists of both solid and fluid regions and or voids as the geometry type and leave the rest of the options to their default. Note that even though we don't have a fluid domain and need to extract it, we already created the boundary surfaces of the fluid domain during the CAD stage. So the fill you cap openings and extract the fluid regions option can be left to no. In the update boundaries task, all the boundaries should have been correctly assigned to their appropriate boundary conditions based on the labels. Ensure that these are correct and move on to the create regions task. Here. Fluent estimates one fluid region based on the geometry, which is the correct estimation. Leave this value as is and execute the task. Next, we will add boundary layers to all the walls in the fluid domain of our model. Therefore, set add boundary layers option to yes. Leave all the settings to default and execute the task. Because the intent is to use the mesh for conjugate heat transfer analysis of the turbine blade, it is generally recommended to create one boundary layer in the solid region at the solid fluid boundaries to accurately predict the temperature gradients. In the add boundary layers task, set the number of layers to one, add in to solid regions and grow on to solid fluid interface and click add boundary layers. Now we are ready to create the volume mesh. For this demo, we will use the polyhex core fill with approach to fill the core of the fluid domain with hexahedral cells and connect them with the polyprism cells at the boundaries using polyhedral cells. Leave the buffer and peel layer inputs to default and ensure that the minimum and maximum sizes are set to 0.1 mm and 3.2 mm respectively. Also make sure that the mesh solid regions option is ticked so that the solid domain is also meshed. Click on generate the volume mesh to create the volume mesh. Here is the generated volume mesh. You can clearly see identical mesh between the two periodic boundaries and three layers of boundary layer mesh in the fluid region and one layer in the solid region in the solid fluid interface. In the channels that are wide enough, hexahedral cells are created. However, for the narrow channels, no hex cells are created. To ensure hex cells are created even in the narrow regions, the minimum size should be reduced. With that, let's wrap up this workshop.